Hello everyone and welcome back to a very special spooky episode. So this year I've been really obsessed with the Corpse Bride. So the next logical step is to make a historical version as you do. So the problem with this movie in particular is that it's kind of a hodgepodge of late Victorian, you know, isms. So how I dated this movie is that I looked mainly at Victoria's outfit in the entire movie. She wears two, but they both have the same silhouette. And I determined it is likely in the 1880s. So what stood out to me about Victoria's outfit in particular is her sleeve shape. And that her sleeves are kind of poofed at the top, but they're very tight for the rest of the arm practically, only like the bicep area right here is enlarged and it mainly goes up instead of out, which is more characteristic of the sleeves of the 1880s. I saw this one from an auction website, I don't know, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. It looks what I would picture her dress to look like in reality if it was you know, made in a live action movie instead of puppets. But, you, you can see in the dress it has the it has the poof at the top of the sleeve and it has the 1880s characteristic like button front and the high collar which she has the whole movie. And you can also see that in her wedding dress she has the same silhouette of the poofed shoulders and then the tight fitting sleeve. And now on to the hard part, which is Emily's dress, which is the one I'm making. So for Emily's dress, in the film, they say it's her mother's wedding dress. And at first, I kind of discarded that, but I realized it would work better if I made it older, because then it would add to the story, and the 1880s wedding dresses don't really have as much of an off shoulder as I wanted the dress to be because her dress in the film is more 2000s. It's, it's sleeveless, it's got a sweetheart neckline and it's kinda got like this big slit in the front so it's more it's more 2000s. It's not very accurate. I guess you could say the slit was made from her being in the dirt but you know I'll cut the film some slack. <laughs> The wedding dress, I tried to go for an off-the-shoulder because it would match the the silhouette better than if I did sleeves or like a higher shoulder as seen in a lot of Victorian eras. So I did some math and basically I'm saying that Emily probably died when she was around 20, right? And if she was 20, she prob her mom probably got married same age as she did, had her probably worked like that, right? So I'm setting this 40 years into the past. So I went for an 1840s style. And I've never done that before, so this was a challenge. So I did what most historical costumers do when they want to find out about a new era. I did intensive research. And I did a lot of Pinterest boarding. Since I was doing a wedding dress, I was looking at the evening where not not day wear. So I just wanted to make that clear up front before I went into this. Now, the evening wear typically had, I wouldn't necessarily call it off the shoulder, but it was kind of like, it was like there, or even a little bit higher. It had a distinctive like V shape in the front. Oftentimes these dresses had either like a poof sleeve or a half sleeve or like a capped sleeve. And I chose to do a cap sleeve because I think it would fit best with the almost sleeveless look that I'm going for without being sleeveless. I found a few examples of these 1840s dresses that I liked. And a characteristic of them is that they were often pointed in the front or they had a slight um, point. Sometimes it wasn't so dramatic, but when you get to the later 1840s, in transition to the 1850s, they have more of a pointed front. Oftentimes they either had four darts in the front or they had like this paneling where they would have a middle seam and then two 
Well, the front would essentially be five pieces. <laughs> so it'd be the, the side pieces, the middle front piece. Oh no, it'd be four pieces. I was wrong. It'd be four pieces. There's one fashion plate I found in particular that I wanted to emulate as close as I could. And I did a somewhat successful job at it. But essentially, it had this almost off the shoulder silhouette like I was talking about where it'd have like a V or a sweetheart neckline, which was important to me because I wanted it to emulate the actual dress in the film. Oh, I forgot to mention, 1840s dresses oftentimes had this flower like in the middle of the chest. It would either be a bunch of flowers like in this fashion plate or it'd just be a singular flower. And oftentimes it'd be a contrasting color, like I saw a lot of pinks and I guess sometimes they'd have blues, it depends on what color the dress was, but it's oftentimes a contrasting color and I really wanted to incorporate that into my dress because I felt like that was a distinct characteristic of the 1840s, so I put that on my dress. These 1840s dresses have large, I would call them cup cupcake-like. Um, skirts where they just are full everywhere except maybe sometimes the front they'd be a little less full where the point is but for the most part they'd be really full and have pleats it wouldn't be cartridge pleats but it would just be normal pleating which I saw on a lot of them I thought they'd do more cartridge pleating but I guess that was more popular in the 1850s and the 1860s <sighs> I may be wrong on that but the dresses that I saw had a lot of just normal pleating instead of cartridge pleating. So the first step to this entire project was making a corset, which I have not done before. So this was a this was a challenge. First I started out by using a pattern from the Symington corset collection that they have free on their website. Not their website, it's the what's the name? Leicestershire? Leicestershire? Leicestershire. I'm so sorry. I basically printed out one of their patterns, cut and pasted it, put it together, and then I tried to see if the shape would work, and it didn't. So it essentially was way too long, and I have quite a short waist, so I needed something that would go in and out fairly easily, but it was very long, the corset pattern. So I essentially had to scrap that one and make an entirely new one. And for my first draft, I used a really sturdy canvas, which was probably a mistake. But, you know, the goal for the corset was to make it as curvy as possible and work with my shape. Cut the sides of it to make more room for my hips because it was like squishing down my hips, which is what I didn't want. I wanted it to flow around my hips. I wanted it to be as snug as possible to my body, essentially, but without flattening anything. So that was the real challenge of the corset. Sewed in a waist tape and the waist tape I kind of, it got folded a little bit. This is kind of like a half boned. It's not fully boned by any means but it's just enough in the areas where you're supposed to have boning so it works. Size was way too big at the top so I had to <laughs> I had to put folds in and then sew it down so it wouldn't be so like full on the top because when I enlarged the cups I made it too big all around and it the fullness was better at the bottom and it especially worked for an 1840s corset. The dress itself, first I made the front and I kind of free balled this. I didn't really use any books, I was planning on using a book, but then I just ran out of time so I just free balled the, <laughs> the front. I drafted it myself on my mannequin 
with my mannequin wearing the corset and I tried to gauge where the seam line should be according to the extant garments that I saw and that distinctive front that I was talking about that I wanted to emulate. I cut it out on the bias because I looked at patterns of fashion too and then the fronts are usually cut on the bias. Then I figured out the back once I got those two front pieces, you know, together and the, the front seam together. And then I made the back using the same curve line as the sides. And then I just altered the shoulder and the height of the back. It made double of those and then I did that for the lining because the lining is the exact same as the front and the back because I didn't want to have to make new pattern pieces. I almost forgot the little cap sleeves so I quickly drafted those. <laughs> the, I did most of this in two days so keep that in mind. <laughs> I drafted it really quick and then I attached it kind of haphazardly to see if it would even fit. It worked out really well, so it was pretty much okay. Before I put the pieces of the lining in the outside fabric together, I, I made little boning channels because the fronts were usually boned with the point and then the two side fronts. Side fronts. You know, the two little lines on the front. I'll put a little diagram. The two little lines and then the front. I put little boning channels in there. I made the skirt just a panel and then I sewed two sides together. You know how to make a skirt. It's just like a skirt and then I attached it to a waist tape and then I put the waist tape on the thing, fit it, and then I put the pleats on the waist tape and then I sewed the waist tape to the bodice. I was originally planning on making it detachable but then I got lazy and tired because it was on Halloween and I didn't want to do that. The closures, I did hook and eyes, which is a pain in the ass, by the way. I hand sewed all of them on. I think there's in total probably like 12 or 13 hook and eyes on each side. And I added the little flower detail on the front out of some flowers that I bought. I planned on using blue flowers for a headband, but I didn't get to do that because I was already running out of time, so... Maybe for next time I'll make a headband if I want to wear this costume again. I made a sleeve out of a glove and a pair of tights that no longer worked anymore. And I hand painted a skeleton on both sides, a skeleton arm, to fit with the corpse bride. And I'm really proud of how that turned out. I think that's my favorite part of the costume, to be honest. <laughs> it turned out really pretty. And I think it works with the illusion. I tried, I've seen a couple of other people do like an actual skeleton arm, but they put it on their arm. And I always thought it looked cool, but I always wanted to try an optical illusion type of situation. So it wouldn't be something that's stuck on my arm, but something that I wear over my arm. So it would work for that. And I think I pretty much achieved that really well. You know, with the time limit that I had, obviously you could do better if you spent days on it, but I didn't spend days on it, so I'm really proud of how it turned out. And then I had the final product, which I'll show now. so much for watching and I wish you all a happy fall and a happy new year.